What if I told you that the single most common reason for students in A-Level Maths Paper 1 to lose three, four, five marks is a question that they really should be able to solve? Now, that topic is related rates of change, sometimes known as connected rates of change as well. Now, these are often identified as a silent killer of the A-Level Maths at Paper 1, not because they're particularly difficult, but you're using the chain rule in a slightly unfamiliar way, and it can often trip students up. So today, I'm going to show you the chain rule triangle that's going to make these questions a lot, lot easier to solve. Now, the first question I often get with this topic is, where actually is it in the syllabus? And it often gets forgotten about. So I've got the syllabus out for you. This is now the 2026 updated version, although this particular topic hasn't changed. And you'll notice it's hidden down here in this section. So apply differentiation, the gradients, tangents, normals, increasing, decreasing functions, and rates of change. And it includes, I say this specifically, including connected rates of change, which I often call related rates of change as well. And so it's literally hidden within the syllabus, but we need to make sure that we can do this kind of question. So let's go through a typical exam question here. So this one here for three marks. Air is being pumped into a balloon in the shape of a sphere. That's really important. So that its volume is increasing at a constant rate of 50 cubic centimeters per second. So I'm underlining very important things here. So constant rate. So give me an idea that is this topic. Find the rate at which the radius of the balloon is increasing when the radius is 10 centimeters. So what are we actually looking for? So we want the rate at which the radius is increasing. So we're looking for the change of the radius with respect to time. So as it's increasing as time goes by. So we're looking for dr by dt. Okay, that's how I know what I'm exactly looking for. Then we have to think about what information we have. We have it increasing at 50 cubic centimeters per second. Well, cubic centimeters, that's a volume, and seconds is time. So actually, we've got dv by dt, the change of volume with respect to time. So that's going to be equal to 50. Now we have to think about what would be very useful to have in order to connect these two things together. So in this first part, we have an R and a T. Here we have a V and a T. So we'd like a relationship that connects then V with R. So we can essentially bridge, using our triangle, bridge across between these two parts. So we're looking for the change of volume with respect to the radius. So we're looking at, we've got time in common here. What do we not have in common? We have a volume and then we have a radius. So we're looking for dv by dr. Now it looks like we don't have enough information here. However, the balloon is in the shape of a sphere and the formula for a sphere, the volume of it is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So actually we do have an expression that connects the volume with the radius. Now when we have that, so let's write this under here, v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, we can differentiate this. We can work out dv by dr. Normally we're used to dy by dx, but notice our v is the y and the r is the x. So if we differentiate this, we use our normal differentiation procedure. We take the 3, we bring it to the front, so we get 3 times 4 thirds. Pi, remember pi is just a number. We reduce the index by 1, so we get r squared. Ah, uh, This cancels, and we actually get the surface area formula, so 4 pi r squared. So we now have the relationships that we need in order to answer this question. Now, where does the chain rule come in here? Okay, how does this work? Well, we want to find dr by dt. That's what we're looking for. And we need a way of linking these two things together such that we get dr by dt. This is the, probably the most confusing step. Watch what I'm going to do here. So here I'm going to write down dv by dt times dr by dv. Now, where does this actually come from? So notice here with normal fractions, okay, if we think of this like a fraction, notice that this would cancel top and bottom and we're actually left with 
what we're looking for, dr by dt. So we're kind of unsimplifying the fraction like you do probably a few years ago when you're doing an IGCSE. So I've made an expression that cancels down to dr by dt. Now you might be asking here, well, dv by dt I have, I have got that as 50, but I don't have dr by dv, I have dv by dr. Well, we can do a nice little trick here. So if we want to do dr dr of dv, just like with fractions, we then just flip this, we find the reciprocal, so 1 over 4 pi r squared. You do this with fractions, yeah? So if you flip the fraction, it's the same as flipping the other side as well. So we can actually go from dv by dr to dr by dv. So we actually do have what we need. So we have 50 times 1 over 4 pi r squared, and we can simplify this down to 50 over 4 pi r squared. And again, this simplifies again. So we know that 2 goes into both here, so we can get 25 over 2 pi r squared. Now we're not quite finished here, we've just got the general rate in which the radius is increasing, but we want to find it happening when the radius is 10. So when r is equal to 10, dr by dt, when r is equal to 10. So we just put in for r 10, so we get 25 over 2 pi 10 squared. That gives us 25 over 200 pi. Again, we can simplify a fraction just like always, and that gives us then 1 over 8 pi as an exact value, which I generally prefer for these kinds of questions. So our final answer here is 1 over 8 pi. Now you can have a look at the mark scheme, but one of the problems with this topic and why it's not really covered that well, why it's a silent killer, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is because you look at this and go, okay, derivative, okay, that's nice, 50 over derivative, and then an answer, without really explaining those steps that I've gone through here and the strategy behind it. And this is what A-level maths paper one students often struggle with, particularly at the start of A-level maths, is they get these questions where they don't really have a firm structure to work through and successfully do these questions. Uh, if you want to check out any more questions about related rates of change, I'll leave the video above so you can do lots of practice on this as well, and that'll be useful for you. So by using the chain rule and having this chain triangle method, this is basically becomes a simple substitution question. And that's the importance of having a game plan or game strategy. Now, how about those big trigonometry questions or those big differentiation integration questions at the end? You still need to develop the same kind of game plan. I mean, you can spend hours going through my A-Level Maths Paper 1 playlist. Again, I'll put that up the top here. But you really need a whole strategy, a whole game plan for all those marks on the paper. This is why I'm hosting a 90-minute live workshop on A-Level Maths Paper 1 Extram Strategy. It's making sure you're allocating the right number of time for all those marks available, making sure you can do those difficult volumes of evolution questions that can often appear at the end of the paper, and ensuring that you have a clear strategy for those radian measure questions, which, again, can vary quite a lot, like just like we saw with these related rates of change video. So for 99 euros, I'm taking on 20 serious students to go through this in 90 minutes and making sure it's limited to only 20 students so I can answer all your key questions. There is a question and answer at the end of the session. So if you have a particular question you're really struggling with, I can go through my strategy, my exam strategy to help you through it. Now spaces are filling up fast, so if you are interested in the live workshop at the end of this month, then do click in the description below and book your space very, very quickly, because they're going to go very, very quickly indeed. And if you're looking for an overview of all things A-Level Maths at Paper 1, then check out this video over here. And this will give you a good idea if you're prepared in terms of covering all the content and whether this live workshop will really add value to you.